Hi, to follow up with this tutorial, please watch this series from the beginning. We've learned how to start an activity once we click on any list item. The issue we need to solve it here is the update and delete actions. They do perform the action correctly, but the parent activity have no idea about that action. Let's delete user number 2. As you can see, the parent activity still displaying the same list. We need somehow to tell the parent activity about the action we have made. First thing you have to change in the list of users activity. In the view holder, on click method. Change the start activity method to start activity for result. The first argument is the intent object and the second argument is the request code. I'll enter 1. Notice here, request code is an integer value. You can type any integer number. It is used to distinguish between responses if you have started more than one activity from the same activity. We need to start user details activity. So, go to the user details activity to add some code. After clicking the delete button, you need to create an intent object. Add an additional data on the intent by calling put extra. Specify the key, let's call it action, and the value is delete. Call set result method. This method will send result back to the parent activity. In the first argument, specify the result code. It is constant value. The default is result cancelled. I'll select result OK. In the second argument, pass the intent object. Do the same for the update action. But this time, call the action update. Now we need to capture the result. Go to the list of users activity. In this activity, you need to override on activity result method. We have to check if the result is set by the child activity. To do this, you can check the argument result code if it is OK. And we need to know from which activity the result has been set. You can tell that by checking the request code. So, if the request code is equal to 1, then the result is set from the user details activity. And we need to check if the intent object is not null. If all conditions have met, then you need to tell the Recycler View Adapter to reload the list. Recycler View Adapter is instantiated locally. We have to make the adapter object a member variable in order to access it anywhere in this activity. Instantiate it and pass the object to the Recycler View. Now we can access the adapter object. Call its method notify dataset changed. Now let's run the application. Let's try to update user number 2. Change the first name. And you click update. Go back to the list. As you can see, the complete list is reloaded. The same for the delete action. The issue is solved, but it is not an efficient solution because we are updating or deleting just one record at a time. No need to reload the entire list. Just we need to tell the adapter the position of the item that holds the record, either to update its content 
or to remove it from the list. In the view holder, create a member variable for storing its position number in the list. In the adapter class, on bind view holder method, you need to pass the item's position number back to the view holder. In the bind method definition, create a parameter for receiving the position number. Set the member position to the past position. On clicking the view holder, we need to tell the parent activity to remember this position number. So, create a member variable in the list of users activity for holding the item's position number once get it clicked. Now, on click the view holder, tell the activity to remember this position. On activity result, you no longer need to reload the entire list. Retrieve the action from the intent object and save it in a string variable, call it action. If the action is equal to update, then notify the adapter object about item change in this position. And if the action is equal to delete, then notify the adapter object about item remove in this position. Run the application and check the update and delete actions. Now it's much better than reloading the entire list. That's all for this tutorial. I hope it was easy to follow and helpful. Thanks for watching.